Looking to take your controller skills to the next level? Look no further. In this video, you'll discover the secret controller settings that will help you get optimal binds and reduced input delay and dominate the competition like a true controller beast. So kick back, get ready to level up, and let's dive into the best controller settings for you. With Fortnite's latest update came one of the best new settings for controller players that we've seen in a long time. This new setting is an add-on to the setting Edit on Release and is now known as Auto Confirm Edit. There are four options that come with this setting, None, Edit, Reset, and Both. If you have this option on Edit, it eliminates one step of editing, which would be your Confirm. As soon as you are finished selecting your edit, it will confirm for you, which is known as Edit on Release. Now having this setting on Reset eliminates a step in Resetting, which is also the Confirm. All you to, to reset something is hit your edit button and your reset button and right after you hit your reset button it will instantly reset without needing to hit your confirm bind. This is huge for controller players because before this setting we had to hit three buttons to reset a building piece and now we only need to hit two buttons which makes resetting on controller almost instant. This allows controller players to compete easier with keyboard players who have scroll wheel reset. The last option in this setting is the both option. When you have this on both it turns on edit on release and reset on release at the same time. Go into your own creative island and play around with the reset setting to which option works best for you. If you watch a controller player like Reed and think to yourself, wow, he looks like he has zero input delay, why does my game not feel like that? Then you might be missing out on some secret in-game settings that will give you the lowest amount of input delay on controller. The first setting is an obvious one if you play on PC, and that is performance mode. What performance mode does is it sacrifices the way your game looks to better your performance and give you the least amount of input delay compared to DX11 and DX12. When it comes to performance mode, there are two options, low meshes or high meshes. Both of them have very low input delay so it's just personal preference which setting you want to play on. Now, if you're already on performance mode, there are some secret settings that you can't see that are affecting your performance and input delay on controller. The first thing you want to do is switch to DX11 so you can see these settings and restart your game. Once you load up your game again, all the settings will appear. For the lowest amount of input delay, you want to have all of your video settings on low or off. This includes 3D resolution, shadows, global illumination, reflections, textures, effects, and post-processing. View distance does not affect affect input delay too much and it is very beneficial to have a good view distance so you can see players from far away and also see items on the ground so have this setting on whatever you're comfortable with. When you scroll to the bottom you should see a new setting that does not appear when you have performance mode on and that is Nvidia Reflex Low Latency. This setting reduces your input delay significantly. Turn this setting to on plus boost to get the least amount of delay possible. All of these settings that you see affect your game while playing on performance mode even though they are not visible with performance mode on. Apply these settings and turn change back to performance mode and restart your game. Once you load back in, all of these secret settings will be applied. Do you want to maximize your Fortnite skills? Click on the link below and visit ProGuides.com today. For just $7.99 a month, get insider knowledge through our Fortnite courses, learn tactics that pros use to win competition, and visit boot camps where you can learn from your favorite pros. You can even get 10% off our pro coaching program where you can interact and get one-on-one -on -one lessons from the players who make the dream possible. Controller dead zone is the amount your control stick can move before it's recognized in game. The higher the dead zone, the further you can move your stick before it registers in game. Finding the perfect dead zone for yourself is super important as a controller player. Your left stick dead zone is the stick that controls your movement and your right stick dead zone is the stick that controls where you're looking. Dead zone is all preference. Just because a pro player might use 5-5 dead zone doesn't mean that specific dead zone will work best for yourself. You may be thinking, if having a low dead zone makes everything more responsive, then why don't I just play on the lowest dead zone? Having a a super low dead zone like 5-5 or 6-6 can cause stick drift and make your crosshair placement very bad. Playing that low of dead zone almost makes it too responsive to the point it can be hard to control. There are very good players out there who play on low dead zone, but it does take a long time to get used to. Most professional controller players play on dead zones in the range of 8-12. to 12. This is because any dead zone in that range is easy to control compared to the very low and very high dead zones. The best way to test out different dead zones is in creative. Start at a low dead zone and run some edit courses and free builds. Continually raise your dead zones by one until you find one that you're comfortable with and stick with it to build up muscle memory and fully get used to it. As well as dead zone, there is a setting called look dampening time that also acts a bit like your dead zone. Look dampening time is a time it takes to reach the expected look rotation speed after applying initial input to the controller's right stick. In other words, it's how long it takes your right stick to hit maximum speed. This means that if you have this setting on point 20, it will take point 20 extra seconds for your thumbstick to reach max speed while moving your right stick. This can allow 
allow for more precise long range tracking because it slows down your ride stick speed. Most controller players have this setting off to have no delay in their aiming, but some people use this setting to help with their long range AR tracking. If you're going to try out this setting, go into Raider's aim map and select the long range tracking scenario. Start out at 0.01 and continue raising it until you reach the perfect dampening time. If you play controller on PC, there is a setting you might not know about that could give you less input delay in Fortnite. This setting is known as your controller layout, otherwise known as your controller platform, and it is located in the controller bind section. When you get there, you will see three different options, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and generic. Changing this setting to generic is known to give less delay and make your builds and edits way smoother compared to PS4 or Xbox layout. There are tons of pros who prefer to use the generic layout, such as Reet, Day, and Face Sway. On the other hand, some pros say that playing on the layout of your controller gives you better aim assist than the generic layout. So if you have an Xbox controller, your layout would obviously be Xbox and for PlayStation controllers, you would use the PlayStation layout. Test out these settings for yourself in creative and choose which layout feels the best for you. Don't forget to click on the link below and find out how you can get gameplay feedback and advice from a pro coach. Having the most optimal binds on controller is a huge part of being a great player. Having optimal binds on controller means that you have binds that you press without having to take your thumbs off of your thumbsticks. This allows every move you do to be fluid, especially in high pressure situations. If you have to take your thumb off your thumbstick to press your face buttons, then you cannot look around while jumping or when you switch mode, which could cost you the fight. The best way to have optimal settings at Fortnite is to use a controller with paddles or to play with a claw grip. Playing with paddles allows you to bind the most important binds to to the paddles on the back of the controller while playing with claw grip allows you to press the face buttons with your pointer finger while your thumb never leaves the thumbstick. Now you may be asking yourself, what are the most important binds on controller that you want to make sure are optimal? The most important binds are jump, switch mode, sprint, and edit. These binds need to be optimal because these are the binds you use in high intensity situations like end games, build fights, and box fights, so you need to make sure these binds are easy to press. If you use paddles, make sure some of these binds or all of them are bound to either your paddle thumbsticks or touchpad. Even if you don't use paddles or play claw, you can still utilize your left and right thumbstick for binds like jumping and switch mode, which are the two most important binds out of all of them. If you use a PlayStation controller, you can also utilize the touchpad for things like your pickaxe, editing, or even sprinting. 